Good morning, Ignite Church. How are we doing this wonderful first service of December? I'm so happy to be here. I have the honor and privilege of being here. My name is Edric. I'm one of the servant leaders here at Ignite. For those that don't know me, I'm normally sitting in the back end with the headset. So every once in a while, you know, the pastor lets me come up here and spray work. But he, he minimizes it. Make sure because I, I can talk all day. So he gives me a little, little bits of time here and there. But I want to thank Pastor Eric and I for giving me the opportunity to come up here and speak. And um, first time I get to open a series, so I'm excited about that as well. It's a big undertaking to open a series because if you fall flat, everybody else behind you has to pick up the, pick up the pace. So hopefully I can do the Lord justice with the word today. I had a word written and last night the Lord said, nope, throw it away, start all over again. So I was till 2 o'clock in the morning rewriting the message because the Lord said, no, I don't want you to talk about that. Talk about something else. So, you know, we have to obey. Um, you know, the Lord and I will have a conversation later about me losing sleep. But anyway, um, you know, we got to do what we do. And the Lord's going to bless us this morning. So I want to thank you. So as you saw our promo, this year's service is titled Mr. Grinch. Talking about Mr. Grinch. For those that know who Mr. Grinch is, he's the main character in various Dr. Seuss movies. Uh, namely, the, the Grinch that stole Christmas is the main message there. So just to give you a little background about the Grinch. I've labeled this uh, ser- uh, preaching the Kent- Cantankerous Caper. And yes, I picked a very hard word to say, but it is what it is. And you'll understand why. So a little background on the character of the Grinch. The Grinch was actually depicted from an exotic bird. The person that created the Grinch character actually created it from the beagle-beaked Bald-headed Grinch. Say that a couple times. Like Peter Piper, you'll be tongue-tied all day. Um, Who shares, later we find out that the characteristics of this bird, if you look it up, has similar characteristics to the actual character of the Grinch. Uh, Has a uh, cantankerous attitude. The word cantankerous means bad-tempered, argumentative, and uncooperative. You see, so I wore my special shirt today. If you put that image up on the screen. There we go. So it says, the Grinch, my day. It says, at 4 o'clock, I wallow in self-pity. At 4.30, I stare into the abyss. At 5, I solve world hunger, but I tell no one. 5.30, I jazzercise, like I do a lot of jazzercising. Um, 6.30, dinner with me. And I can't let that happen again, but by myself. At 7, I rustle with my self-loathing. I'm booked. I have a long day ahead of me. Thank you. So let me give you a little bit of recap of the movie for those that have not seen it. Most people have seen it, but... So the Grinch is depicted as a green, furry, pot-bellied, pear-shaped, snub-nosed, humanoid creature with a cat-like face and cynical personality. How many of you guys have people that you know look like that? Yeah, I'm sure you do. Okay. So, in full color adaptation, he is typically colored yellow-green. He spends the past 53 years living in seclusion on a cliff overlooking the town of Whoville. In contrast, his neighbors, the cheerful Whovilles, or Who's, they call them the Who's, the Grinch is a misanthropic, ill-natural, and mean-tempered. The reason for this is a source of speculation. Nobody knows why he's like this. The consensus among the Who's is that he was born with a heart that they say was two sizes too small. Though always hateful, he especially hates Christmas season, making note of how disturbing the various elements of Christmas time are to him, including ear-splitting noises of strangely designed musical instruments. The eating of Christmas dinner and singing of Christmas carols. Unable to stand the holiday any longer, he decides to destroy it once and for all. Aided by his pet dog, Max, he meticulously designs a red suit to disguise himself as Santa Claus. And breaks into the Who's homes on Christmas Eve while they're sleeping to steal everything they own. Right down to the last crumb of food they have and dump it off a nearby mountain. 
So you can see, I mean, if you want a picture in the dictionary of a mean, negative, nasty person, the Grinch will be right there. Now, I want you to close your eyes for a minute. And I want you to picture somebody in your life. Don't say it out loud. And if they're in this room, please don't say it. Keep it to yourself. Okay, and if you're married to them, don't say it to them either. Close your eyes, and I want you to picture this person and all these characteristics of the Grinch and how they have to go through life every single day with this type of loathing, annoyance to themselves. You see, Joyce Meyer stated, negative minds full of fear and doubt produce negative lives which can ultimately destroy your life. You see, these negative people that are in your life every day, if you allow them to, they, their lives and their negativity can seep into yours. And before you know it, you're taking on their characteristics. You see, my wife makes fun of me sometimes because, and not in a negative way. No, no, not negative. Because when I speak Spanish, sometimes, and I know Pastor Eric does this sometimes as well, I speak in the language. For example, if I'm speaking to an Argentinian, sometimes my accent becomes Argentinian. If I'm speaking to a Venezuelan, because I worked in Doral for a long time, my Spanish starts portraying uh, characters of Venezuelan people, Cubans. So you understand? So my Spanish sometimes is weird because I say certain words and then says I'm not an expert in Spanish. Sometimes I take them and I mix them all together. So she's my, pers- my personal Spanish tutor because she helps me. But my point is that if you spend enough time with someone, you tend to pick up their habits, their habits, their sayings, and their attitude. Okay? So I'm going to give you 10 things on how for you to reduce negativity in your life. Now, I'm going to warn you, some of these are going to be very difficult to do. Number one, don't take other people's negativity seriously. No matter how mean they are and how negative, don't take it seriously. Number two, spend more time with positive people. Surround yourself with the right group of people and their positive attitudes will rub off on you. Number three, be the positivity you want to see in the world. Number four, change the way you think. That one's hard because you have to change the way you think about a person or a situation. I'm going to let you know right now, I struggle with that sometimes. Sometimes, you know, I'm not into science, but I was born in April. They say I'm a Taurus. Taurus tend to be bullheaded. Sometimes my bullheadedness gets in my way. And then I have to have people talk me down because when I get upset, sometimes I see red just like the bulls in Spain, and I get upset. So, but there's something that I'm working on. Number five, focus on solutions. Instead of worrying about the problem, figure out how to solve it or how to help to solve it. Number six, love whoever is around to be loved. That's a hard one. No matter what, even if you don't like them, God and the Bible says we have to show them love. Because it says love one another as you want to be loved or treated. So that's a hard one. Number seven, show you care. Number eight, accept the life has ups and downs. Life is not going to be perfect. Sometimes it's apples, sometimes it's oranges, but you got to go with the flow. Even if you want an apple and you get an orange, hey, make orange juice. Number nine, be in the present. Don't seclude yourself. Don't run away from a problem. Be in the present for yourself and for others. And number 10, let go and move on. I'm not going to sing the song from Frozen. Because my voice is not very good, so it will not help, but just let it go. Now, the reason why I talked about this and I changed it is because, as you know, Pastor Eric and I already spoke that the group of the church went on missions. And when I started writing the preaching, it was along the lines, but it ties in. And when I looked at these characteristics, the group that went portrayed all these things. Pastor and I even spoke about their driver and the impact that they had on the driver. On him and his family's life forever. He was forever changed. And why? Because of number three, be the positivity you want to see in the world. 
he spent so much time with them and saw how they got along. And, well, for the most part. I'm sure behind, but, but as far as for him, they got along in harmony. They, they were in harmony. They, so, he, you know, and I, I think my wife told me the word that they call, when a group of people really get along, they call them gente. Tu eres gente, right? Is that, am I correct? Yeah, I'm correct. See, I'm learning. So, gente, that you're a group, group of people. It's a good vibe. It's very welcoming. So, now, they went to do missions for other people, but at the same time, they were also preaching and being an example for that driver. He spent so much time with him that his life has been changed forever. They showed that they cared. They loved whoever was around them. They went with the flow. Sometimes in events, they had ups and they had downs. Literally, one of them fell in a hole. Ups and downs. <laughs> Be present. They were present and they let it go and they moved on. You see, in the movie, The Grinch was allowing his past to control his present and possibly his future. He thought by living alone, he would be able to avoid the painful memories of his childhood. But you see, living in negativity only makes a difficult journey more difficult. Because if you're there and you have that negativity and you're constantly thinking about it and you're not changing your perspective, you're not going to change anything. You're just going to keep thinking about that situation over and over and over again. And in the movie, he portrays that. Because Christmas for him was like stabbing him with needles or spears or whatever. It's, it was just something that he could not deal with. You see, but in the book of Proverbs 14, God tells us, he gives instructions. He tells us the scenario of what we do when it's good and what would happen if it's bad. For example, in Proverbs 14.1, it says, The wise woman builds her house on a foundation of godly precepts and her household thrives. But the foolish one who lacks spiritual insight tears it down with her own hands by ignoring godly principles. He who walks in uprightness reverently fears the Lord and obeys and worships him with profound respect. But he who is devious in his ways despises him. In the mouth of arrogant fool who rejects God is a rod for his back. But the lips of the wise, when they speak with godly wisdom, will protect them. Where there are no oxen, the manager is clean, but much reverence because of good crops comes from the strength of the ox. A faithful and trustworthy witness will not lie, but a false witness speaks lies. A scoffer, seems, a scoffer seeks wisdom and finds none, for his ears are closed to wisdom, but knowledge is ease for one who understands, because he is willing to learn. Leave the presence of the short-sighted fool, for you will not find knowledge or hear godly wisdom from his lips. The wisdom of the sensible is the understanding his way. But the foolishness of short-sighted fools is deceit. Fools mock sin, but sin mocks the fools. But among the upright there is a good will and the favor of blessing of God. The heart knows its own bitterness and no stranger shares its joy. The house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will thrive. There is a way which seems right to man and appears straight before him, but it ends with the way of death. Even in laughter, the heart may be in pain. And the end of joy may be grief. Now I'm going to stop there. I urge you to read the rest of Proverbs 14 because it gives you clear direction of what to do to be positive and what would happen. If you go the negative route. But I want to look at real quick at verse 13, which I just read. It says, even in laughter, the heart may be in pain and the end of joy may be in grief. You see, just because staying positive does not mean that things will turn out okay. Rather, it is knowing that you will be okay no matter how things turn out. You see, sometimes just because we're positive and we think things are going to turn out good... They may not turn out the way we want them. 
God has a plan and a purpose. God has things that have to occur. Far from our understanding. But what we can rest assured is, based on Proverbs 14 and the word of God, that no matter what situation arises, if we look to God to guide us, we will be okay. We will see it through. You see, the Grinch, although he pulls off the theft successfully on Christmas morning, he is shocked to hear the Who's still singing cheerfully. Happy, simply to have each other. Then he realizes that the holiday has a deeper meaning that he never considered. Inspired, he stops the Who's belongings from falling off the edge of the mountain. And in the process, his heart grows three sizes. He returns all the gifts he stole and gladly takes part in the Who's Christmas celebration. You see, the Grinch decided to no longer allow the negative things in his life to spoil all the good things he had. He chose to be happy and live in joy and kindness. You see, he realized that he had a life. He was just blinded by his negativity and his anger to see it. He realized he had a best friend in his dog, Max. He was there with him no matter what. But he couldn't see it. He had a friend in there's a, uh, in the movie, there's a gentleman that he does all the light preparation. He's like, I guess you say the custodian or the guy that, you know, and he was always kind to him. And in the movie, he calls the Grinch his best friend. And the Grinch had no idea. And the Grinch wasn't able to see that. He had all these people that were welcoming him. You see, in the movie, the little, one of the little girls comes up to his house after he returns the gifts and he confesses to what he did. Goes to his house, knocks on his door. And invites him to their house for Christmas dinner. So then the Grinch goes. And at that point, because his heart was three times as large, full of love, no room for anger, no room for negativity, his eyes were open to see the things around him. He realized that the meaning of Christmas is not the presents or the lights or the decorations. Rather, it is surrounding yourself with people in your life to share the most important, most important moments in your life that bring you joy. But sometimes those moments can bring you pain. Yet those people are still there for you to lift you up and bring positivity when you feel that you're in short supply. The key is to have a support system to navigate through. You see, don't allow yourself to become a Grinch. If you fill your heart with love of God and allow him to be the greatest gift by developing a personal relationship with him, I assure you that you will never be alone again. You see, if we go back to Proverbs 14 verse 1, the wise woman built her house on a foundation of godly precepts. And her household will thrive. It doesn't say she. It says her household. His household. So everyone in your household, if you are living by godly principles and you bring that light and you're that positivity, you're that person that shows love, you're that person that pulls them through, that will radiate with everyone in your environment, everyone around you. But it says, but the foolish one, who lacks spiritual insight, tears it down with his or her own hands by ignoring godly principles. Nothing can come from having a negative outlook on life. Situations will arise, struggles, tribulations will come. But your positive attitude and your faith in God will guide you through. And you will avoid living 53 years of your life in seclusion and alone. The things that happen in life, if you surround yourself with the right people, will seem minute in comparison. But if you don't wake up and change your attitude, before you know it, 53 years of your life will pass and you'll have wasted every single opportunity to live happily and enjoy life. 
So I urge you today, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you have not built a relationship with God here in the house or online, I urge you today, when I pray in a moment, that you say this prayer and you ask God to build that relationship. And you will see how your heart will go from two sizes smaller to three sizes as big, full of love and joy, and there will be no room for negativity in your life. Don't get me wrong, and I know it's a daily struggle. I'm not preaching to the choir. Sometimes the human mind is a tricky thing. The devil plays tricks, starts putting in your mind, am I the right person? Should I marry to this person? Is this a person I'm supposed to be with? Am I doing the right thing? Is my career path? Why wasn't I doing this? Why is my friend or family member financially blessed? And why am I struggling in the moment? Why do they get what they have and why don't I? Why has God forsaken me? What do they have that I don't? That's the type of attitude that will, again, instead of building your house on the foundation of godly principles, will build it on crippling and your house will crumble. It can lead to other things. Divorce, anger, loss, because you spend so much time worrying about the negative that you don't see the blessings you have right in front of you. So I urge you every day, when you wake up, first thing in the morning, to think about all the positive things you have in your life. All the blessings. You know, your children, your family members, your spouse, whatever it could be. The job that you get to go to every day, the house that you live in, the car that you drive. And those are material things. The fact that you have a relationship with God should be number one. But I urge you to wake up with that attitude. And I guarantee that your day will be much different than if you wake up with a negative attitude. If you wake up with joy and you go to bed with joy, joy will be out through the entire day. So we'll go ahead and bow our eyes, close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Father Lord. And I pray for anyone that is present in the house or is watching online or will see this message later on throughout the world. Father Lord, I pray that this message that you brought, Father, will touch them, Father Lord, and will see them to have a relationship with you, Father Lord. And if they want one, Father Lord, I pray that they repeat this prayer with me now, Father Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to come into my life so I may build a relationship with you. I acknowledge that your son died on the cross to pay for my sins and has cleansed me from any sins, Father Lord. So now I have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you, Father Lord, that you come into my heart through your Holy Spirit and you will guide my path, that you fill my heart with joy, Father. Lord, with an abundance, Father Lord, that you grow my heart three times as big as it is now, Father Lord, that no negativity will come into my life and will stay there, Father Lord, that I am covered with the blood of Christ, Lord, and that I think every day of all the positivity that I have in my life and everyone that surrounds it, Father Lord, Lord, and that I can be an example for those around me that are dealing with situations, that I can be that light for you, Father Lord, to show your glory and grace through me. And it's your name I pray. Amen. I pray that today's message that the Lord spoke, considering that I had to change it overnight, was a blessing to you and to those, and that was well worth it. Ignite, I want to I thank you for coming out tonight. We're going to see you next week for session two of Christmas at Ignite. Please, if you make it out to the house, it's always better to fellowship in person and create that positive vibe here in the house. But if you can't make it, please watch us online. See you next week, and God bless. At Ignite, we believe in spreading the message of Jesus like a wildfire. Thank you for your support, and be sure to check us out on any of our social media platforms at Church Ignite. Until next time, be blessed and remember the best is yet to come.